Do it live! Catch them in the pasture, run them in the pen, work them on the Sunday, do it all again. Race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. Hi, I'm Tie Down Roper Tyson Durfee, and you are watching the Pepper Stewart Show. Uh, never heard of him, dude. What? What's he talking about? What's going on? Downtown Round Brown. Look at Tex. Tex is here. I'm back, I'm back from court. He's back from court. Is this like a mall or something? They, yeah, they let, they let me out for a couple of hours anyway. I'm out on visitation. Out on visitation. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, somebody calling you already. Look at that. Who's calling? Somebody's calling? I, I, I hope it ain't the payroll for roll off. You I don't know. Should we, should we, just, should we just roll dog and see who's calling right off the bat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do that. Hello, who's calling? Hey, hey, this is Daniel Unruh. Oh, hey. you you. We've got you live roll hey. dog on the show. What happened? Hey, no, no, man. We're me and Phil are just sitting here listening to your show, driving down on Interstate 35 here. You know, it's kind of late. It's four minutes past this. Oh, that's all right. Better we're late on, than never. We're on text time. That's the in my life, being late. So we're we got, we got the bull bullfighter extraordinaire right here on the on the telephone with us. Where are y'all headed to? Hello. Well, that happens. So anyway, those of y'all that wonder what's going down, uh, you're tuned into the Pepper Stewart Show. You're here. We're here. We're all here. Those guys are going down the highway and something happened to them. They told me it was only five. <laughs> it, it, that does happen, you know, yeah. driving on your phone. Things happen when you kind of mix the two together. Yeah. So don't, I don't know from a feeling. I just know by the time. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. All right, so anyhow, we got some stuff for you guys tonight. A lot of stuff. And some information. Today, of course, today Star Wars Day. For those of you that hadn't figured it out by looking at Facebook and seeing 10,000 people post the same crap a hundred times. So you figured out that. So we're going to tell you something else about that you probably did know. We're going to tell you where Darth Vader works. Because we know. And we're going to tell you about that. May the fourth be with you. It can be. But the good day is tomorrow. All right. It's Chico de Mayo. All right. So, that's, so today's the fourth, tomorrow's the fifth. Mm. So does it make it more special when you say it in Spanish? <laughs> Today is Cuatro de Mayo. Does that matter? <laughs> or is it more special when it's the fifth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm it, just it checking. <laughs> <laughs> we, ho tomorrow it's your post holiday. Not really. But, but. You, but you need to double check because a lot of people think it's something that it's not. Yeah. That happens a lot. <laughs> but anyhow, here's what's going down. We're going to we're gonna talk racing. We're going to talk horse races. Horse racing, we're going to talk about that. Horse racing is coming up. Kentucky, Kentucky Derby is going to be coming up soon. Uh, I lost some money on that already. Already? He's broke. Mm. Um, if you're checking out Texas style and profile and cap over there, rodeo rodeo naked caps, caps, T-shirts, and apparel. Check it out. It's good, stuff. Mm. good stuff. He I'm does he does that every day. I'm all about rodeo and naked. Yeah. We got cow stuff, as we always do. We're going we're gonna to throw down some cow stuff for you. Tell you about some cows and... Uh, it's time for me to get me a few cow. Cow stuff. Yeah, you got your, uh, you got moved in your new place, settled in, set up, mm -hmm. and ready to go. So mm -hmm. it's about time. Mm -hmm. About time for the, I, move them on over. I even had a couple of people visit me yesterday. You had visitation at your house? I had a visitation at my house. I guess Tuesday. Would've, I guess it would have been Tuesday. Ta were they bringing tacos? Like on Taco Tuesday? Is no. that what happened? They'd bring you tacos? No. They would just, it was just two men in a van, all it was. <laughs> that happens a lot in your place, doesn't it? <laughs> you got just two random men in a van show up or what? <laughs> they showed up. They, they, they did call, folks. Oh. I did give them that. They did call, They folks. called you. All right. So two, men, two men in a van called you, <laughs> and they showed up to your house. Did the, did the van have windows? Did you have windows on this? Was it a windowless van or had windows? No, it had windows. It had a tenant window. Okay. 
Yeah. That's that's not as bad. <laughs> if you got tinted windows, it's not as bad. Yeah. Not as yeah. bad. But. They need to call and check up on me. See how I'm doing. Well, the, 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 they, what, what are we doing? They they coming to they invite me to to the church I've been going to for the past three weeks. So evidently, you didn't make a big enough impact. They didn't recognize you've been there for three weeks, huh? You got to do some backflips. Every now and then, when you walk down the aisle, when everybody's got their hands in there, if you do two or three backflips, they'll remember who you are. They'll know you've been there. That is a fact. We got rodeo stuff, PBR PBR stuff tonight. We got uh, PBR highlights from the uh, Kansas event, recent event in Kansas. We're going to... Uh, Show you the a couple of highlight rides from that deal. At some point today, we'll throw down some bull riding action. We're gonna tell you about your calves. Do you know your calves? Do you know what your calf market's doing? The beef export. All the, a lot of stuff big on exports. If you want to read the article I wrote on uh, beef import export stuff, it's on peppertour.com where it says stories and stuff. That's where you can find it. There's a story about beef export in there. We're gonna tell you who the beef export, the world beef export leading countries are, and how many million metric tons of beef we're gonna tell you about that beef it was for dinner and we're gonna talk to a featured one of a featured athlete or one of our spotlight athletes which is a featured athlete tonight we're gonna talk to angelina angela angelina angela i'm looking forward to that angelina not yeah. angelina jolie yeah that's a, well, anyway i bet she's still a movie star i bet who are we talking to uh, i bet i would like to go on a date with her you can't go on a date with her she's married uh, but that you have a daughter? I, I don't know. I would ask that. <laughs> maybe we can ask. What, 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 what would that come conversation? <laughs> well, maybe we, we can ask her in the comment when we can uh, call her. This, this guy. <laughs> How many dates you go on this week? Did you go? You went on like three. I didn't know. Well, I don't. It, it, I'll give you this. At least it was the same person. <laughs> At least it was the same person each time. So you do, you're doing better. One on one on don't count because she didn't she didn't know we were dating. What? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know the date? She didn't know it was a date. What did she think it was? <laughs> well, we wanted the same table. And she didn't know I was looking at her. Oh, okay. One of those dates, she didn't know I was there. Oh. Were you in a jury box? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was at the dinner table. Oh. But she was at a, I, I was at the table in the corner, and she was at the table in the middle. So you are at the same restaurant, at least, right? We were at the same restaurant. Okay, well, that, that, count, that counts in some, in, in some areas. That. <laughs> Some areas, I don't know. Depend, depending on how you write up the police report, that could that could count. <laughs> I, I it wasn't stalking. I was just doing intent research. Okay. Well, hey, re it's all about research. More people today need to do more research. I I can tell that by Facebook posts I see every day. So that will help a lot. Uh, what else could help a lot is some tunes. Uh, we threw down some. I threw down some tunes last week of. Uh, Tony Lundervold, and you know what? He's got such a great album. We're gonna throw down some more tunes from uh, from Tony tonight. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna throw one of those tunes in your ear hole right quick, and uh, let you enjoy it, listen to it, and then we come back. We're gonna throw out a couple of a couple stories for you guys, and uh, tell you some stuff at the same time. We're gonna tell you stories, tell you stuff. And uh, make it all burn your ears. Because everybody wants their ears burnt. If you haven't been outside yet in the sun, you haven't got your ears burnt. That's happening. So anyhow, you are here. Here. Why you are, we don't know, but you're tuned in. And you like it, or you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be coming back, especially folks over across the pond. Tokyo. Man, Tokyo, you guys you guys are enjoying some uh, some burnt ear holes. I can tell you that because uh, you've, you've been on top of the top of uh one of the uh one of the boards for the last couple of weeks man you guys have been tearing it up over in, t over in tokyo on uh on our overseas see england was wearing them out for a long time england was, england was way ahead then england dropped and tokyo took over and england's behind tokyo so it's a uh, internet international stuff going on so anyway i'm throwing on a tune for you everybody's staring why y'all staring at my master tatters hat here I'm going to throw some tunes for you guys, and then uh, we're going to come back, talk about some stuff, because that's what we do. He had a small lean frame and a big old heart. A bronc riding fool right from the start. Cowboy said he was the man to see. 
I showed up, said, would you teach me? With his help, I was on my way. And took less bills, brought home more pain. And every rodeo I'd ride, his words of wisdom were deep inside. September in 09 A million things run through my mind That trophy saddle in my hands So this goes out to a noble man A noble man's who you want to be He's behind the legacy The cowboy That is what he said. A noble man is what he wants to be, and that's yeah. what you want to be too. Yeah, we all do. Noble. You want to be, a, be a noble man, noble uh, woman. Uh, you want to be noble, noble too. There I, we go. I want to be a noble man and get a holy woman. Yeah, that he does. So what? So what are you talking about? What do you do? What you been? You been locked up for three days, four days. Yeah, about three days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Working on something. What are you working on? I had to go to courthouse. I got collected for jury duty. So uh, I had to go fill my civic duty by spending time at the courthouse. All right. And making about 80, about 80 chips bucks. Oh, that ain't bad. 80, I, so I made 80 chips dollars in three days. Well, being how you uh, can use money. <laughs> stuff. I mean, buy stuff with money. It always <laughs> seems like it works out all right. Uh, uh, well, that's 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 a good deal. But Even though you were you were there for what three days? It, it was good. It was good. Complicated. It was a learning experience. I got learned all about the technical criminal justice system and how it all operates and how a jury of your peers will convict you of, of a crime. Yeah, they will do that. Yeah. So yeah. Did, did it help you on your? Uh, on your uh, investigative reporting on what not to investigate and how to investigate. Mm-hmm. Along, you got better watch out the good friends that you hang around. You some some of those girls might get you in trouble. It happened to this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll happen to you. You get uh, yeah. So, uh, you better what got to figure out whatever your girlfriend had on her. And she's riding with you. Uh huh. It also can be applied to you <laughs> because you're in the chain vehicle. Yeah. It may it may not be you, but y'all are riding together. Should I get guilty by association? I don't know. So I need to figure out. I I guess I need to ask fucking a little bit better fucking on my online dating first date thing. Yeah, you might want to do, do a little bit more investigating. Yeah. Investigating, rep- investigating reporting right there. I don't I don't really do much research on first date, but maybe I need to start doing research. It's time. I don't want to 
I don't want to get stopped late at 12 o'clock at night. Yeah, and then as soon as I get stopped, my girlfriend exit the vehicle. Start running? Start running. <laughs> so, so then I'm caught with 13 grams of methamphetamine that I got to stick up my ass. What? <laughs> Can you say that? Oh. Can you say that word? Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. 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 I'm going to know. I'm going to know. What do they use? Family show. <laughs> Family show. Rectum. Stick up my rectum. Family, Family show. Family show. Look at that. <laughs> rectum. Rectum. <laughs> I forgot. They, they did use that channel in the court. Rectum. Butt <laughs> dumpling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Say what? Anal cavity. Yeah. Can I say anal cavity? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they got it now. I'm sure they got it the first time. <laughs> oh. I'm sure I wasn't really politically correct. Oh, my, my uh. Rectum. Yeah. Rectum. 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 Rectum barely knew. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, what? What just happened? Oh man! So anyway, he learned some stuff while he was in court studying. I, hey, I never seen methamphetamine until this week. I know what methamphetamine looked like now. Did, did you have to? Did they make you sample it to see if it was real or not, or they just told you it was real? They told me, but they they brought in the uh, lab test. Technician. I get the lab tech. I guess that's what you call the it. Technician. Lab technician, and she, she and she vouched for it. She said it was. All right. And she weighed it and tested it and all that stuff. All right. And she yeah yeah I tested it. I signed my name on it. This is me. Yeah. There's no police here to help me. Mm. <laughs> what? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I I heard that before. Is that my phone? <laughs> what is that guy talking about? Oh uh, man, that y'all like a Wednesday night youth group, it can't. <laughs> does, does it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just wondering. Uh, mm, well, where the newspaper boy was? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I used to live that door to this guy. You probably did. <laughs> you, but now I am that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know what boys like. I know what guys want. I know what boys like. <laughs> oh man! No, yeah, no, I'm not that guy. He's not that guy. No, that guy. How about the bull riding guys? Who wants to see some bull riding? PBR bull riding right here. We got some highlight, highlight videos for you from the recent Kansas event. And if you watch closely. Behind the shark cage, when Marco Aguche runs out to the shark cage, uh, you will see the Pepper Stewart Show photographer extraordinaire there, Felipe Philip, standing there uh, looking at you, by the way. But anyhow, let's throw this at you and check out some highlight rides here from the Real Time Pain Relief Velocity Tour PBR action going down in Kansas, Wichita. Wichita, Kansas, way up yonder way. And uh, let's see what happened. Cody Heffernan. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Which Australian is going to be on top after that? Cody Heffernan seems to think it'll be him. Excellent ride aboard Hard Candy from Gilbert and DNH Cattle Company. From his first effort in the long round, he was 85 points. This score right now will be the highest one we've seen so far tonight. 87 and a half, and your new leader. Had some great finishes this year. Push wax. Wow. <laughs> The bull called Bushwhack well, come, from Paul Herb right McDonald. Right come. Take a picture. Ozzy, you got to look. You got to go back to Iron Cowboy in Arlington. Kaike Pacheco was the last man to ride that bull. 
And Marco just showed you why he is the number 17 ranked bull rider in the world. And judges liked it. Let's go to the lead, 86 and a half. Watch this, Wichita. Yes, sir. Picture perfect ride for a guy that some said was on the down slope of his PBR career, but he looks as good as he did when he first showed up. What do you guys think? 86 points moves him to second place right now in the round. Spiring booze right there. Booze. Where's the beer? Where's the what? What? It, what's he talking about? I thought I thought they had family kill. Yeah, what's this guy talking about on PBR right here? You know, I, the only thing I got to say about that, I hope you guys enjoyed the highlights right there. What's going on here? Uh, highlight time. Highlight blackout. What's going on with that? There you go. Um. Good stuff right there from the PBR bull riding action. Only thing, only question I got is, what did you shoot that footage on? <laughs> I'll I'll let them borrow my camera. My our, our camera shoot good footage, so I don't know what they shot that, what they shot that with. Uh, I had seen reports they were shooting some stuff with iPads and cell phones, so that could be some something to do with it. But other than that, PBR bull riding right there. That is your highlights from Wichita, Kansas, right there. Velocity tour action for you. Follow up with that. There was no uh, built for tough action going on, so they had some velocity or action for you. So good stuff as always. Always PBR is always got some stuff for you. Oh, we're talking about Star Star Wars today. You gotta say it, you gotta say it right, Star Wars, because may the fourth be with you. The fourth or the fourth? The fourth. Today the fourth. Joe, you have to change the fourth. All right. Well, there's a guy. Do you, do you know this guy? There's a guy that wor works at, uh, what's it, what's this here? There's a man, this man's name is Darth Vader. Darth Vader. He was born shortly after the release of the original Star Wars film and works as a medical technician in dun dun dun, Tennessee. So it's Darth Vader. Okay, so that's on a bunch certificate. Did his parents name him Darth Vader? Did they? Darth Vader Williamson, 39, explained the Origins of his strange name in a video shared by St. Pancras Hospital in Memphis in honor of Star Wars Day, May the 4th. He's worked there for more than a decade. When I was born, my mother wanted me to be named Junior after my father and my dad was a Star Wars buff. He was so enamored with the character Darth Vader, he was like, huh, let's name our kid that. <laughs> so under effect of, of the effects of the anesthesia, Williams' mother agreed to the name, which appears on his birth certificate. It was. That later came to regret. Why would you regret that name? She regretted it afterwards. Well, she was out. She was kind of, she was, she was high on uh, legal drugs at the time. What have we done? She was like, <laughs> man. She's like, what the heck just happened? He had a hard time with the name when he was younger, but he eventually grew to accept it. There you go. He didn't make, he didn't get made fun of, did he? I'm sure he did. But he looks like a big enough old boy. He could probably handle himself. But he said once y'all got through high school and the girls were digging it. <laughs> I could use it to my advantage. Uh-oh. Yeah. I bet he was really telling us. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the high school girls <laughs> like Darth Vader. <laughs> they want to check out the lightsaber. That's what's going on with that. <laughs> Then he would been able to remain low key about sharing the name with the kid look kid lore to the point his two daughters rolled her eye at the idea of the, of the name being a big deal. <laughs> his daughter Jay, nah, we yeah. ain't even, nah. They're like we ain't down we're not down with that. That's what they said. Darth Vader, what his name is Darth Vader. So one of his co workers knitted knit him a Darth Vader doll, which he dubbed Mini V. And uh <laughs> he's, but he's not a particular fan of Star Wars. Says he hasn't seen the film beyond the conclusion of the original trilogy, Return of the Jedi, which I don't know which one of those is. Um, I don't know anything about that. 
I was not there when it happened. I don't know the difference between Star Wars and Star Trek. So watch the chat board blow up with that. He also doesn't share his father's love for the Darth Vader. He likes another villain. Bubba Fat. I wonder what that villain is. Oh. Bubba Fat or Boba Fat. Boba Fat. Or, or Big Fat. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? So yeah, he's all about that. So anyway, today's the fourth of May. Tomorrow will be the fifth of May, and then sixth and seventh, just like any other month, no, any other year. Tomorrow Cinco de Mayo. Tomorrow will be Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> and after that'll be Seis de Mayo, <laughs> Siete de Mayo, Ocho de Mayo, Nueve de Mayo, <laughs> Diez de Mayo, Once de Mayo, Dos de Mayo, Quince de Mayo. Mm. Well, how many you wanna go? <laughs> you wanna get to Vente de Mayo or what? Mm. Then people think I'm talking about coffee. Because half of them idiots don't know that Vente is a Mexican, a Spanish word. They just think it's the size of coffee they ordered to <laughs> at the rat hole ten dollar a cup place. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not buying that. Talking about it, Talbot? No. Mm. But yeah, they do that. Why? Why? I pay five dollars for a cup of coffee. I'm not doing that. Mm. Not me. Not today. Not ever. We are going to talk. We are going to talk to Angela at some point today. Angela, Angelia Jolie. No, Angela <laughs> Kershaw right there. We're going to talk to her shortly. Here in a little while. We'll talk the other to her. movie. Well, she's at a, she's at a barrel race. She's at a barrel race tonight. She's got some. Some uh, I think she said a youth bell race. She's got some some kids riding or or uh, running on her horses. So that's what's going on with that. Why don't we throw a, we're gonna throw a tune in your hole. Uh, right quick. We're gonna throw a tune in your ear hole, and then uh, we'll come back and tell you some stories and make some calls and do some stuff. But we're gonna throw another one from Tony Lunderbold at you, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll come back and tell you something. I'm sure we could do that. I'm sure we can come back and, and tell you something about something. The sins are very strong It's hard to tell what's right and what is wrong With all the choices that you face Living life out on the road By yourself you can't handle Living 
I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddle Rock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. That's what he said. What do you think about that tune, old Tex? That's a good show. Hey, I didn't want one more. Amen. There you go. Glory right, to God. Right there in your ear holes. Yahweh is king. Cussing one minute, praising Jesus the next. Tex is on fire. Mm. Okay. <laughs> what? I don't know. Isn't there, a, isn't there a meme or a... Hey. Hey, Jesus... Went to the temple and turned over the table. So. Turned over the table? Well, yeah. He didn't like the table? Yeah. What was wrong with the table? Think somebody tell him what would Jesus do? He would turn remind, the table over? Remind people that Jesus turned over the table and chased people out of the temple with a whip. He whipped them? Yeah. He chased any whip or he chased them out with a whip. He needs to stop watching Fifty Shades because that's what happens in there, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I only read Bible stories and they find a good story in the Bible. You don't need no other book. Would you like to come inside for a cupcake and a glass of wine? <laughs> what? <laughs> that don't want, you got to think, be more. Uh, <laughs> you got to think outside the box. Yeah, yeah. Saying, saying, uh, think outside the box? Yeah. This is the 2017, you got to think outside the box. <laughs> no way to work no more. Uh, Everybody's checking our stylish lids here. Boy, look at these. You can get those. You can get these. You can get these somewhere. I think they thought come in flat or not. I don't see. Look, everybody always thinks I'm bald. Look at this. Gotta figure out here how yeah. my hair's going. But yeah, I have hair. Oh, I just cut it. Yeah, now. I think you're bald. <laughs> yeah, you blind. You blind us on the side. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I wear caps sometimes. People always wonder about that. Yeah, I wear caps from time to time. Lots of caps, cap hats. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I got leukemia and my hair falling out. Yeah. Isn't that what happens when people don't? I have no idea. You get leukemia. I fear it's hereditary. Yeah. Baldness, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'm not bald. I don't know. I I don't know about that. But I know about this cow prices right here. Look, take a look at these prices right here from Emory. Emory livestock auction right there. They're they're still they're still sitting at uh, at eighty cents. They didn't get hit by a tornado. It's uh, still operating. Uh, yeah, they still operate. They had a sale on Tuesday. This is a, this is the Tuesday results right here. Uh, the three three to five weights were all eighty cents to two twenty. 80 cents to uh, 222 10 on your three to three to four weights. Your four to five weights was 80 to a dollar 75 to a dollar 80 on your steers. Your heifers were about the same. Your packing cows 40 cents to 73. Your top pairs were 1200 to 1650, and your low pairs, uh, low middle pairs 600 to 1250 dollar bills. That's baby calves 25 dollars to 400. They had a couple of horses, $100 to 350 some goats and sheep run at uh, 25 to $150 right there on your, uh, right there at Emory. Now, if you go about two hours down the road and you hit Paris Livestock Auction right there, you jump up to $1.65. So if you're in Emory, it's 80 cents. You go to Paris, $1.65 on your low end right there, up to 220 uh, they run your three to four weights with a dollar thirty-five to two ten. Your five, your four to five weights, dollar dollar thirty to about dollar seventy eighty-five. Uh, your packed cows with thirty to seventy-five, which about the same. Heavy bulls about the same. Your pairs twelve, uh, eleven hundred to sixteen hundred is about the same. Uh, your pairs were a little higher in, in uh, Paris this week, nine hundred to eleven hundred, and your packing cows seven fifty to fourteen and fifty. 
Uh, they didn't have any babies. They didn't have any horses. They had a couple of goats that ran $65 to uh, $175. So that's what you got right there with uh, with your market report. Right there for you guys. In your face. In your face. What are you talking about? Who said that? In your face. Say that. That sounds fine. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. but it, it does them. <laughs> mm. Oh my! All right, what are we gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about Kentucky Derby or what? Oh, well, you know what? Did, well. Right quick, right quick. When we're on beef prices, talking about beef prices right there. I want to throw this at you right quick. Uh, the World Beef Export. We said something about that a while ago. World Beef Export leading countries in metric tons. This is a, this is per million metric tons. So if you know what a million metric tons if you're on the metric system you know what tons are metrically you want to convert know what that is. you want to convert that to real tons i'll let them convert it mm. as part of a learning learning uh curve plus i don't know what that means mm. all right here we go brazil is number one brazil is numero uno right there with their exports of 1.85 so you got 1.85 million metric tons coming out of brazil they are tied with India, 1.85 in India as well. Australia, rounding out third with 1.36. United States, 1.12. And rounding out the bottom end right there, New Zealand, 0.58. Now... You want to do a wildfire comparison? That's that's the beef exports. So let's throw out wildfires right quick too. Your U.S. wildfire comparisons, uh, kicking it off with 1.6 million acres got set on fire in 2017 was the Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado fires. Coming in a second in 2016, 400,000 acres from Anderson Creek fire. And all the way back down to 2006, those of y'all that remember this deal, 907,000 acres burnt in the Panhandle Complex fires right there. So they're telling you how much beef is exporting and how many people get their land, land, cattle, and stuff burnt up. So we had fires. Well, you know what one metric ton is in pounds? One one metric ton is two thousand two hundred and five pounds. So what's a, how many pounds is a million? Did you Google that? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't Google that one. You didn't, you didn't Google a Google a that one right there. Metric ton to million. Well, I don't know how many how many metric tons is in a million. How many re, how many real pounds is in a metric pound in tons millions, yeah. trillion billion quadrillion. <laughs> a metric ton is one point one. Ton, U.S. ton. What? Uh, What's the, you got a story over there? T- tell me about the. You came all about kangaroo th- plus his horse race in Australia. You got a what? I, I'm talking about the kangaroo, the kangaroo in Australia. All right, so you ready to jump on to uh, horse race and talk? Mm-hmm. All right, tell me about that. Yeah. What about a horse race in Australia? Australia down under? Yeah, down under. Uh-huh. Way down under. Took a bajillion ton when a kangaroo hopped on the track. Uh, yes, sir. And claimed to lead the yeah. So the kangaroo won the horse race. <laughs> kangaroo on horses? That's what I, that's what that's what you're telling me. We have video. Somebody got video. All right. Maybe YouTube got video. We got a picture of it right now. The kangaroo racing career proved to be short-lived. As he spotted an opening in the line of horses and bounced off the track. What? The horses and the rider came unfazed by the kangaroo cam- Camaro appearance. <laughs> the, the what? The Camaro? Camaro. How about a Camaro? The Camaro. Cameo. How about a Cameo? Oh, Cameo. Let's go with Cameo. I can't, I can't read. Or Camaro. Yeah. A Cameo? Ah, okay. Speaking of horse race. We'll, yeah. dive, we'll dive back into horse racing here. Here in a bit, we're gonna do we're gonna do a little ring a ding ding action right here, and uh, you gonna call my love? No, we're not calling Terrell State University and talking to the women's prison again. 
Uh, we're gonna talk to uh, our, one of our spotlight featured athletes right here. We're gonna do. Uh, while waiting. Hello. Hello. Can you hear Hello. me? Hello. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. All right, we've got a spot. A featured athlete tonight is also a Pepper Stewart Show spotlight athlete. We got. Uh, and is it Angela? Or did I say it's it wrong? Angela Kirkhoff. That's it. I had it. I had it right the third time. All right. So, what's what is going on? What are you up to tonight? What's going down? Uh, I'm not up to much tonight. I'm really um, working these horses, getting them ready to take them to the Cowboys of Color Rodeo for my two youth riders right now. It's actually what I am currently doing at this point in time. <laughs> All right. So, do you want to fill the viewers in uh, a little backstory on uh, on what got you into barrel racing and uh, and what you've been up to? I sure will. Um, I started horse riding when I was six. So, let's just say that's been a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I started did barrel racing because I always had the need for speed. How about that? <laughs> and um, I got into the barrel racing. And <clears throat> it has been a very hard sport to get into. Um, it's a very humbling sport, and I know it's it's one of <laughs> it's very hard to explain. Um, you have your very highs and your very lows. So I uh, I pretty much um, just enjoy it, and I enjoy teaching. So. That's pretty much about it in a nutshell. So, so tell tell us about a few of the uh, a few of the places that you ran. What what is what's one of the uh, one of your favorite places uh, that you competed at that you ran at? Um, one of my um, all time favorite places is in Hamilton, Texas. Um, I love the Diamond T Arena down there. Um, huge facility. Um, I just love it because it's an indoor facility, wonderful stalls. It's just beautiful there. And, and it has a large indoor pen, which um, a lot of my horses like. Uh, they like big outdoor pens. And this one is indoors, but doesn't. it's not like it doesn't, you don't run in it like an indoor pen. I know that's kind of confusing, <laughs> but... Uh, and I also like Waco. I, I love running in Waco, Texas. Um, I love that pen um, right there where they hold the WPRA finals right there. Okay, that, that's not by the Branch Division yeah. compound, is it? Well, I hope not. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Waco. That, that's that's some good. That's some good. Also, some nice, nice of right there to run in. So, um, now when you're not out barrel racing and uh, traveling across the country mm -hmm. competing, what what do you find yourself doing on your spare time when you're not out feeding horses? You're not out working. You're not. You just you just sit back. You want to relax and just kick back. What do you find yourself doing? It usually involves horses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be real honest. If I'm not at work and not driving the school bus and not at the barrel race or teaching a lesson um, besides sleeping and eating in my house. I'm, I mean, I go to a livestock auction every now and then, um, watch some of the kids from school um, show their um, heifers and, and uh, pigs and stuff when they go to the, the livestock shows around here. But, I mean, other than that, there's not a whole lot that I actually do. But what about what about TV? I mean, I'm always on. What are you catching now? When you're on, you're on the road, you're watching TV. You're at, at home. What what kind of sh what shows do you watch? You got any any guilt, guilty pleasure TV shows that you catch from time to time? Uh, I watch Dancing with the Stars. Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my favorite show. Tex is a big fan of that. Oh, is it? Yeah. He's also a big fan of Bonner Bolton, so that helps too. What? I don't know who that is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my. He, he's all right. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, well, the pace, yeah. that, well, his his story his story is good. You know, from the the PB, you know, being a bull rider and breaking your neck and not being able to walk, and then all of a sudden you're dancing with the stars. So it's always, it always makes always makes a good uh, a good story for TV. Well, yes, it does. It does. It, his looks don't don't bother anybody either. Yeah, um. yeah. Nah, they don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> what? So what are you talking no, about, Tex? No. They don't bother him either, he says. No. No. <laughs> Kitty. Evidently, they don't. <laughs> oh, man. So you, you got, when, when you're out on the road, do you got any, any? Uh, what's what's your snack? What's your snack you, you pack on the road? Everybody everybody packs different snacks when they're on the road because they know, you know, you're headed to the rodeo, you got a time limit, you got to get there, you don't have much time for Stopping here and there. So, what what is the what's your snack pack that you that you haul with you? My snack pack. Well, it definitely would consist of a bag of um, Lay's potato chips, mm. and I would have a bag of peanuts, and I would have to have my Starbucks double shot energy drink. Now, when you're talking about peanuts, yeah, be, are, are you going salted peanuts, mm-hmm. roasted peanuts? A hot and spiky peanut. You're going hot and spicy peanuts, in the shell, out of the shell. We, we need to, we need to dive, dissect this peanut deal here. Oh, you're wanting to dissect the peanuts. Okay, it, so it's going to be a dry roasted peanut with salt on it. Okay. So you don't, so you don't have to deal with the mess of cracking those things. No, I don't want to get my truck dirty. That can so make a mess in your if truck. If I don't have the mess, we'll let the vacuum up later. And plus, when you're traveling down the road, it's kind of hard when you're driving to eat peanuts in the show. <laughs> so it's cracking just mm-hmm. yeah. But the deal, the deal I catch myself, the, the the big thing I catch myself with is is uh, miniature miniature pretzels, the miniature salted pretzels. I keep a bag of those around a lot. Those make a good snack. Those do. I actually like those. It just depends on the day, really. Whether it's a peanut or pretzel day? You know? Mm. Yeah, if it's a peanut or a pretzel day. So what do you have in store? What do you have lined up? What What does the rest of this year look like for you? What What do you have on the uh, on the rodeo schedule? Um, rodeo schedule, everything's fixing to really kick in, um, big time for me. Um, and of course my, my youth riders that are riding with me, uh, we got the Cowboys of Color this weekend, but we also have the Central 40 that's running at the same complex in Oklahoma City. So I have horses running in both pens. So we have those. And then the next weekend, um, we have a rodeo in Blanchard, Oklahoma, and then um, we, have to, we have Waco coming up in July, um, which that's a really big race. And that's our um, elite. And that's about $50,000 added when you're all said and done. Hmm. That's, a, that's um, a good one. I, I also have... Oh, go, go ahead. Um, I also have the D and D and Chickasha that's coming up in May the nineteenth. So um, May the nineteenth is the D and D and Chickasha, and then I have a rodeo the next weekend. And yep, rodeo the next weekend, and then we're in Waco. And Let's see. I'm looking at my calendar. <laughs> we have that um, barrel races here and there. I have a whole bunch of MBHAs and you name it, I'm doing it. That's out now. It just, now, when you're hitting the trail with all those rodeos, you're burning up the highways there. What's your What's your traveling team like? Who's Who's hauling with you? You got some. You got some folks that. Uh, travel with you to help you get down the road? I sure do. I have my husband that comes with me 90% of the time. 
Um, and then I have Rachel Bush that comes with me. Um, and Victoria is with me all the time, my youth rider. She likes to go and experience and see when she's not running. Hmm. Um, they all go with me. I usually have a full truck when I go somewhere. Now, who's, dri- um, who's driving this truck? Everybody helps me get I'm driving the horses. You're driving. Okay. I, I would make sure you want you want making the husband do all this driving for you. Your show, making him your chauffeur. Uh, no, he doesn't do any of the driving. That's kind of the the funny, the giggle thing that's amongst us that travel because <laughs> I don't let him haul my horses because I have this. I don't really trust him driving my horses because I don't like his driving. <laughs> so you must drive like Tex. <laughs> nah. Nobody rides with him either. Yeah. <laughs> well, my husband, you know, he. Yeah, I don't trust him with my big expensive horses driving down the road. Mm. So. No. They don't. They don't fuck me either. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, nobody wants to ride with me. We can go two miles down the road, and they we ride separate vehicles. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, you definitely wouldn't be driving my truck and trailer, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that's what goes. But my husband comes with me, and he actually saddles and, and packs all my horses and allows me to be able to, to run as many horses as I run. So, so that sounds like you got a pretty good support system going with you. I really do. I really do. Um, you know, it's hard sometimes with my husband being in the military. It's hard to have him there sometimes. Um, where Rachel picks up the slack when he's not there, but it's really, really hard. Um, but, you know, I, I really do. Everybody goes. Everybody supports me. And, you know, it's amazing, you know, what rodeo family can do for you. And it and it helps the support helps even from you know from the big things to the little things everything comes together everything makes it work and that that's what uh, helps everybody get them down the road. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know if you didn't have that, and it's even the the people at home that are feeding the horses that are left behind. That you know, I mean, you couldn't do it without them because you'd be coming home every night. Feet, trying to feed and drive and you know it just doesn't work so um, you just couldn't do it without a team you no, know take, you gotta have a team it takes always, always takes a team and you got a good team and uh, and with that uh, we will let we'll let you get back to working working them horses and get ready for some barrel races uh, and we will catch up with you down the rodeo road and see what is going on and uh we appreciate appreciate you visiting with us, and we appreciate you joining the Spotlight Athlete team for the show. And uh, wish you good luck down the rodeo road. All right, we well, always thank you, and it's a pleasure always. So thank you. I'll be look forward to being talking to y'all again. Thank you. All right. That is what she said right there. She is saying Tex is not driving nothing. <laughs> At all. So, good deal. Yeah, check her out. She's going to be on the highways in Bywoods, Texas, right up down the road. If you want to know where she is going to be next, keep an eye on the Facebook page, Pepper Stewart Show Facebook page, as all of the events our spotlight athletes are headed to are posted there. They'll tell you where they're going to be, so you can go run into them. Run into them at the next rodeo near you and take a picture with them. And if you tag us in it, we'll post on the page too. We do that. We do that from time to time. We'll get some folks send pictures in or tag them stuff, and we'll put them out there for them. But always a good deal. Barrel racing, can chasing. We're gonna get, we're gonna get text on a barrel horse before it's over with. He went from he went from uh, riding a bronco, bucking bronc, and saddle bronc. And now we're gonna barrel race him. I kind of want to ride a goat. A what? A goat. How are you gonna ride a goat? Uh, well, I know how you're gonna ride a goat, but how are you gonna <laughs> ride a goat? Come on now. All right, let's talk about Kentucky Derby. We we're gonna talk about this, weren't we? The Kentucky Derby 2017 predictions: Which horses are gonna win? Which horses are gonna win place and show? 
Uh, the Kentucky Derby almost always provides generous rewards for handicappers who can sort through the field of 20 young horses coming from all around the country and trying one and a quarter miles for the first time in their lives. Granted, there's a good deal of luck involved since the best horse easily can be uh, compromised by bad poles, post position, a stumbling start, traffic issues, and the condition of the track. Still, there's a lot of silly money in the betting pools on this big day. You know, some people are like, oh, I like the gray horse. Oh, I like that jockey. I like that number. So Saturday, this Saturday, May the 7th, Siete uh, de Mayo is the uh, Kentucky Derby. It's the 143rd run for the Roses featuring the winners of Florida of the Florida Derby, the Louisiana Derby, Santa Ana Derby, and the Wood Memorial Bluegrass, Sunland Park Derby, and Spiritual Stakes, as well as the second and third place finishers from a lot of those. Um, so you can get you can you can pretty much get out there and and jump on the long shots. A lot of those fifty to one odd type horses, or five to one, fifty to one. You can cash in. You can cash in big time. Uh, just like see, there's there's gold in there. See last year, what happened? This is what happened last year. Last year with the favorites finishing one and two, that bet paid eighty six dollars. But in two thousand and nine, think about this: two thousand nine, when jockey Calvin Borrell steered his fifty to one long shot. All right, he was picked fifty to one to win this race, and he did. And that one dollar ticket paid. $20,750.30. Yes, you heard me right. $20,750.30. So, it's a uh, it's still it's it's like the lottery. It's still like a lottery to go play that deal, bet on the horses. So, what do you think Tex, you can right there Saturday and throw down a dollar bill on the long shot? I may put down a $100 bill on a long shot on a short shot. On the pork, you can do that too. <laughs> uh, we got beef. We got some more beef stuff to get to. Man, it's, it's already eight o'clock. It's already time. What? This is crazy. Uh, it's time for me to call my woman. She's getting out of the ho hospital now. What? Which one are you talking about? Oh, you're okay. Yeah. At least, all right. Yeah. So you're you're good. You're on the same one. You're good, deal. <laughs> uh, I only get. I'm a one woman man. That's right. One at a time. That's biblical. Uh, Chicago, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange live cattle future closing higher Tuesday uh, by fund buying short covering the solid beef demands lifted the June contract to its uh, three cent price limits of traders blah 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 Tuesday morning average wholesale climbed two dollars and fifty cents from Monday's the sales cut surge at three dollars and sixty eight cents to two. 13 to the dollar court blah 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 so much of mumbo jumbo don't worry about that uh know your calves and your market to add market value we'll tell you about that next week uh can edible insects help global global curb global warning i don't know do you know about that i have no idea what about the edible insects you know about edible insects over there i don't know livestock are responsible for a problematic amount of greenhouse emissions Livestock is causing the greenhouse emissions. We need to kill all the cows because they're ruining the audio layer. <laughs> what? That's what it says? Yeah, I know. He's <laughs> making that up. You make it up as you go. <laughs> <laughs> New research quantifies the benefit your edible insect could offer on on climate. What? If cricket and mealworm <laughs> replace <laughs> half the world's meat consumption, agriculture land use demand. Agriculture land use <laughs> demand could be cut by stone. Oh. Livestock currently uses 30% of the land. All right. Occupying land that might be used for more environmentally friendly purposes. Livestock produce carbon dioxide and methane to kill. All right. By, you know how they do it? They breathe. They yeah, melt. well, no, you said it earlier. Yeah. That's what they did in prison. That's where they hit the drugs. <laughs> 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 you know, somebody got on. Somebody got on us on one show a couple years ago. 
some guy wore us out in a comment section or 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 uh, I don't know if it was one of the replay or one of the I think it was where one of the replay videos was posted, and this guy wore us out about cows and about how cow farts were killing the world. Yeah, but they are. And he was he was he was dead set serious on that deal. I was like, "What, really? Come on, man." Yeah, they they ruined the involvement. So what else you got? What else happened? Is that it? Okay. Ooh, it's a study conducted by Chanty of the University of Edinburgh. You know that'd be good. If they come from the Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Ed- to Edinburgh. <laughs> it's Scotland. Oh, okay. Lord, call it. If they first compare the environmental cost of the conventional meat production with the alternative meat product. What are you talking about? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, alternative meat production. You want to know what that is? Tell me about that. Uh, she, they replace beef with chicken, reducing food waste, and potentially introducing energy. Inject more commonly into diet. All right. When when would help achieve land shaving with more sustainable food system. See, you look, if you eat more chip fillet, eat more chicken. Eat more chicken. <laughs> and we don't need the cow. We don't need raise cow no more. Cow ruin the environment. Chicken, not so much. Chicken, yeah. Eat more chicken. Eat more beef too. You got to rotate the two. I want I want to see these studies. I want to know who's going there capturing these. Who's out there following this cow around, catching catching these these emissions from methane, this cow? They, they, they emit methane gas. Yeah, those guys. Methane are, gas is poisoning. The people doing these these uh, studies are full of it too. That's an, that's my two cents on that deal. Well, the environmental challenges facing the global agricultural industry are increasing. And yeah. this paper has studied some of the alternative foods that we can introduce into our diet to alleviate some of the pressure. We need to change our diet. Change our diet and help the environment. I thought I told you to get lost. <laughs> what? You know what? I'm going to get me a yard shun and go. And go what? You're going to go stand out in the street and get run over or I'm what? Stand out for you. And say, eat more chicken? I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to have me one yard trying to just eat more chicken. All right. And I'm going to be standing in the courthouse with, uh, with another chine. Just eat beef? That you uh, no more alcohol in my community. <laughs> what? Are you still, you, you, y'all still stuck on that vote? And you're, <laughs> you get, y'all's voting in your town whether you're going to be wet or dry? Yeah, my community, we're, we're, we are voting on full ambition. That's because all, all that is is in, in little towns like that, they don't want they don't want alcohol sales in little towns. Because the church people don't like running into each other at the liquor store. They just don't look right. Yeah. They like to be able to go to another town where they don't see anybody, recognize anybody. So they don't want it there because then they're going to have to go there and shop, and they don't want to run anybody from church. That's yeah. how that works. No. All, all philosophy, all yoga, a vote for alcohol, a vote against family values. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh-huh. So I'm going to have I'm gonna have my time. <laughs> No alcohol, no beef. <laughs> That's not a joke, son. <laughs> <laughs> what? Chicken and water is what for dinner. Chicken and water? A waffle. Oh, yeah, chicken uh, and waffles, chicken and what do you think? Uh, chicken uh, and water, I, I have to tell you, uh, chicken and water because no beer, I mean no alcohol. <laughs> what? <laughs> no alcohol, water. Water only, chicken only. Water, you got watered down chicken, what you can have. Yeah. Nobody wants that. El, El Pollo Agua. All right. So anyway, you want you want you want Pollo de Agua? Is that what you want? El Pollo de Agua. All right. That I'm sure you can do. El Pollo de Agua. All right. Puto. What? Pollo? You talking about Pollo? This party is officially over. All right, we're out of here for this guy. Find him on Text Travis. Text Travis on Facebook. He's out there. Check him out. See what's going on with him. Everything else going on with the show. Paperstore.com. Check it out. Look around. Spend some time. See what's going on. Uh, read some stuff on the website at Paperstore.com. Wander around. Look at stuff. Read stuff. Buy you a T-shirt while you're there. <laughs>